All right, thank you for staying with the Monday Report. The town hall discussion starts right now. We're talking about the state of devolution. This is just a few days, actually, but more than about 20 days to the Devolution Conference 2023. And we have the host, Governor, His Excellency Jonathan B. Governor Wasingishu is joining us from Eldred. Thank you so much for making time. His Excellency Professor Hilary Barchok, Governor for Bomet, is here with us in studio. Asante Sana for making time. Honorable Godfrey Osotzi is here with us. Senator for Vihiga, thank you so much for making time. And Honorable Shege Moura, County Assemblies Forum Secretary General Asante Sana for making time this evening. We'd like to hear from you mostly. Has devolution worked or not? What do you recommend going forward? At Trevor Mbija at Citizen TV Kenya, use the hashtag Monday Report. And Governor B, I'll come to you straight on this conversation. Ten years after, and the devolution is here with us, has it worked and why? Thank you very much, uh, Trevor. First, I want to bring greetings from Wasinkishu County. This is the county of champions. It's a county that is prepared to host the devolution conference uh, this August. And uh, I'm happy that we are discussing on a topic that really touches on people's lives, devolution. Uh, personally, this is my first time to be a governor, but uh, from the success stories I have gotten and what I have seen in office, devolution works. There is a lot of success in devolution, um, in devolution, first, the founders of devolution wanted to make sure that uh, we bring power and resources to the people. And the people are given power through public participation to decide for themselves what kind of projects they want. Uh, and they choose and they identify and to make sure that whatever really touches them, if it is the road, if it is the hospital, if it is any other thing, it is within the power of the common man. Secondly, the evolution has brought about equitable resources in, in our counties. In the past, when there was no devolution, anybody who was in power could direct resources to their home turf. But this one, because it is anchored on law, that uh, we are going to have equitable resources. Even the marginalized counties, which have never seen development right now, they can boast of development in their areas. Okay. Now, devolution has also brought services closer to the people. And uh, when you talk of services closer to the people, we are looking at the health, we are looking at water. In Wasingisho, for example, before devolution, we had all, all, almost 60 hospitals, but now we are boasting of 138 facilities. And uh, we have all levels of hospitals. In my county, for example, we have level four hospitals and uh, one in Kesesa County. Yeah. Uh, another one is in Tarbo and all others. We also have level five sub county in, uh, at Ziwa. Okay. And two weeks ago, I was able to launch uh, eye unit and dental unit, things that were never there before devolution. Secondly, we have seen that devolution gives us power to, to really feel that we belong. All resources are coming to us, and we are proud of ourselves. Okay. I want to say devolution really works in All Kenya. Right. And I want to say that 10 years yeah. of devolution, we will be able to give a story. And if it has worked in a record time of 10 years, yeah. how about the next few years ahead? It will really work well. Okay. Uh, Prof, has this been a success? Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Trevor. And I uh, want to agree with my colleague, Governor, that um, the evolution has worked. But that does not mean we have not been having challenges. I want to start by saying if there's anything that happened to this country that is good after independence, it is, it is the evolution. Uh, in the previous system where power and all the resources were centralized in Nairobi, there's these small, small villages, even in my county, that a minister or a president who is seated in Nairobi didn't know. And as my colleague has indicated, there are things that we have been able to do as governors with the support of our assemblies that would not have been possible if that power and the resources were not developed. 
we have been able to construct roads. We have been able to construct hospitals. We have had our own people and their voices being heard through public participation, how they want to be governed, how they want their resources to be spent, and even how they want us as leaders to be accountable yeah. through public participation. So from my own analysis, despite the challenges that we have been having as a country and as devolved units, we have marked a lot of milestone of success. Okay. And there is something to celebrate about even 10 years down the line. So it has worked. Okay. Well, so see, as you give your review of it, what, what needs to be done differently? Well, um, maybe let me start by echoing the sentiments of my uh, fellow colleagues here that uh, devolution is one of the, the most uh, important development that this country has witnessed since independence. But that aside, there are also successes and failures um, of uh, devolution. Um, maybe when I mentioned about successes, uh, there are a lot of things that happen in the villages that were not happening before. Um, if you take a casual look at the villages before devolution 10 years back, uh, you could see there were no vibrancy in our markets. There was no business uh, really uh, that you can say it's business. But you go to the village markets, you find a lot of uh, economic activity happening. Uh, 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 entertainment points, uh, you, you see a lot of business happening there generally. Yeah. So to that extent, uh, there is uh, benefits that have uh, come as a result of devolution. But there are challenges mm -hmm. uh, uh, that exist to date, uh, 10 years later, they have not been addressed. Uh, one of the challenges is, uh, of course, um, full transfer of uh, functions yeah. uh, from the national government to uh, the counties. It is taking too long. And I think uh, that is something that we will uh, be discussing mm -hmm. during the devolution conference. How do we ensure that we have full transfer of function? Uh, in the fourth shadow of our constitution to the counties. And one such function yeah. is health. Uh, uh, a lot of people have this idea that health should be taken back to the national government. I think they don't understand the challenges that counties go through. Mm -hmm. uh, the real problem in the health sector is because uh, though health is a devolved function, the national uh, government still controls 70% of the money yeah. uh, and only gives to counties uh, 30%. That is not enough to pay salaries, to equip the hospitals, to buy drugs. So I think it is important, yeah. uh, the issue of uh, full transfer yeah. of function should be given a lot of emphasis. Agriculture, for example, mm. about 12% of the budget goes to the counties. The rest of the money remains up there uh, with the bureaucrats yeah. uh, holding on to that money. If this money is devolved to the counties, I think we'll begin to see uh, a lot of changes. Water, about between one to 3% yeah. of the budget goes to the counties. What happens to the rest of the money? It remains up there. Okay. So really, uh, we need to get these funds, yeah. with these functions, de fully devolved, so that we begin to see yeah. the fruits of devolution. Okay. The other issue is uh, disbursement of funds. Yes. Uh, I mean, uh, the Constitution is very clear that uh, at least 15% of uh, nationally uh, collected revenue yeah. should be taken to the counties. Uh, without undue delay. Mm. But you see what happens? They delay the funds, and uh, governors really, I uh, really sympathize with them because yes. they have to pay for things they are not able to pay. Okay. Their planning is uh, uh, affected because they are not able to, 
to, to, to plan well okay. because they can't pay you uh, in, in time. We'll try and so address those We have issues. a lot of Just issues. The yeah. payment system, yeah. uh, the whole payment system, uh, if means and all these things. Uh, so we have quite a lot of issues. Okay. That we, needs to be dealt with. We'll discuss if that. Sure. We need to uh, really get uh, the fruits work. of devolution. Okay. And Shege, in your view, as the notion of leave no man or woman behind as it worked, mm -hmm. because you're the one in direct contact with the people at the world level now. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me, um, Trevor. And um, let me start by saying again um, devolution has been the hallmark of the constitution, the new constitution that the country is having. And for us to be able to answer the question correctly yeah. of uh, who's been left behind and whatever is to look at who, we, who are the key players in the in the in the cog that makes um, devolution. Who are the main actors? And of course, at um, the county level, there's on one side the county executive, which is headed by governors, and the assemblies that are um, you know where where we are. And then now you move to the other key players like. Um, the senators yeah. and what is the role of the Senate in ensuring who no one is left behind and the, the monies that were supposed to do whatever they're supposed to do are actually doing it mm -hmm. and, at, and if there is value for money. Yeah. Um, again, the role of uh, national government um, in ensuring that devolution does not fail and is implemented in the way that it's supposed to uh, operate. There are also major players that come into play that is um, the constitutional bodies, like the, yeah, the COB, the Control of Budget, yeah. the Aud Office of the Auditor General. What is their role in ensuring that no one is left behind and everyone is supposed to be doing whatever they are supposed to be doing? Mm. Uh, the CRA, the co you know, Commission of Revenue Allocation. And of course, other players like uh, development partners and of course the media. Yeah. So you have to look at all these actors and what is their role and what are they doing in ensuring that it happens. Um, the good senators mentioned um, key areas like health, uh, agriculture, water. Mm. If you are to interrogate the role of the Senate in ensuring uh, no one is left behind, that should be a, a, a continuous discussion. And that's why we congratulate um, the Council of Governors in coming up with this, uh, this year's uh, a theme of um, looking at the 10 years. Uh, in those 10 years, um, how can we actually find uh, movement in terms of um, ensuring that Kenyans are having benefits of devolution? And if there are challenges, what are those challenges? Um, you know, issues like disbursements. Um, I think the national government really needs to come out, and of course there'll be major players in this discussion, yeah. in, understand, in giving us very critical um, answers to that. When uh, counties are suffering, you know, three, four months in disbursements delays, how does it end up affecting the more normal Mwananchi? Mm -hmm. The control of budgets uh, uh, implementation report, the, the recently re, um, you know, published one, mm -hmm. shows that um, all counties um, have, uh, I think almost all are below 20% uh, in implementation of development budgets. Mm -hmm. um, counties, bigger counties like Nairobi are actually below the 10%. Um, given the first nine months of uh, the administration. So what, uh, to that extent, how does that affect uh, the normal Mwananchi and them being able to see the fruits of devolution, yeah. as it were? And now moving to the next financial year, yeah. what needs to be done? So it's a, it's a conversation, but I think the most important thing is to look at every player yeah. and uh, what are their roles and if they're actually doing it. Okay. Uh, from the assembly's point of view, I can, you know, top on my head and uh, the governor is here. Um, what we are supposed to be doing for the first nine, mo five, first, uh, nine months of the, uh, since ascension into office, mm -hmm. we've done our bit. All the governors without exception have their governments up and running. Their, their CECs, their chief officers, their directors are in place. Again, if you look at quick analysis of what legislative assemblies are doing in the counties, we have passed all their CIDPs 
others even without amendments. We have done uh, county integration uh, development plans. Yeah. We have done annual development plans for them. We've done the county fiscal strategy papers and numerous sub uh, supplementary budgets that they wished for us to pass them in time. And even now, because June is over, I think all counties have passed uh, the county budgets. So as far as our role as county assemblies in helping devolution work, we are up to scratch and we have done as best as we're supposed to be doing okay. as up to now. All right. The other the other actors need also to they explain. They need to do their part. Yeah. Let me bring Governor B on this. Governor B, what do you would you say is the greatest challenge to devolution, and what do you recommend going forward? Because we've had this conversation around not being given money in, on time by the national government, but there's also the counter argument. Why don't you improve on your own source of revenue? Why can't you live within your means? Is it that you have a bloated workforce in the counties? What would you say is the biggest challenge? and what you recommend. Thank you very much. Uh, let me concur with the, the other speakers uh, on this issue. First, it is not only the delayed disbursement. This time, the Kenya Kwanzaa government uh, has tried, because though it delayed, but they have dispersed all the funds. At the same time, they have given governors uh, two weeks to undertake the absorption. And uh, right now in my county, I am at uh, over slightly over 70% absorption rate. Other challenges include uh, inherited court cases that are so numerous, especially from the defunct um, uh, municipalities. Uh, there are also challenges of pending bills. Uh, in my county, I found uh, 700 million pending bills, but so far I have tried to really pay, and uh, I'm now at 20 million only, and I'm doing my best. Uh, another serious problem is the wage bill. Wage bill is a, a real thing because you know this is a political office, and there is a lot of pressure from your voters to employ them. And I know for a uh, fact is uh, this pressure is very hard to to you know to bear. So once uh, in a while you want to employ casuals, you want to employ doctors, you want to employ, and this one really impacts on the wage bill. So the real serious problem now is the wage bill. The, the recommended wage bill is at 35 percent, but I know some of some counties which have surpassed they are in 40 or they are in 50, others are even in 60 percent wage bill, which is which is a very grievous thing. Nonetheless, we can mitigate on this. First, uh, we want to improve on our own source of revenue. For these few months, I've been in office. Uh, I've been able to hit a mark of one billion. I'm just, uh, I'm just uh, ten million shy to a billion. And uh, as a fact, we have put mechanism on our own source of revenue, and uh, already these few months. We are doing it. I'm very sure my target of 1.5 to 2 billion is achievable because we have to increase, increase our census revenue because that will count in our shareable revenue again or our shareable, yeah. So I, I want to say that uh, when we increase our sh on source revenue, we will be able to get much from the shareable kitty, and this will help us to employ our people. Yeah. This will help us to do development. Okay. And as I'm talking to you, uh, Opicha, yeah. uh, county assemblies have played a critical role. Uh -huh. in, in my county, we have ward development funds, and this each ward is awarded 42 million. Okay. This has really helped us to do so. So I'm very sure that going forward, devolution will be a real, a real thing. It okay. will be a story to be told. All right, Governor, Governor Prof, Professor, how do you, what do you recommend to deal with these issues here? Because I'm sure you share almost the same issues: late disbursement of funds, on source revenue, huge wage bills, pending bills. What do you recommend going forward? Okay, thank you very much. I had earlier on indicated that. Um, of course, we have reason to celebrate yeah. 10 years of devolution, but that does not mean we have been not having challenges um, as counties. And I want to agree with my colleague, Governor Wasinkishu, and also Senator Utsotsi, that um, I think the main challenge that we have been facing as counties is the issue of resources. 
Of course, there are functions that have been devolved, yeah. but they have not been accompanied by the resources to enable us as counties and as governors run those functions effectively and efficiently. Secondly, there is the issue of uh, disbursement. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm happy for the first time ever since I became a governor, we managed to receive all our disbursement before the close of the financial year. Um, that has not meant we are able to do everything that we are supposed to do, because for us to plan well, then the disbursement must be prompt. Of course, this financial year was a bit unique because of the transition. So it took uh, almost two quarters of our financial year to settle in the office. So that can be an excuse. But at the same time, when we have complaints and debates in the media that counties have not received money, even when you award a contract to a contractor, they are very slow to implement. Reason is because they are not very sure that they will be paid before the end of the financial year. So the absorption this financial year was a bit poor because of the transition and because of the uncertainties that we also registered because of so many other factors that is public. Mm. Um, so one, of course, is to ensure that we receive a timely disbursement so that we can organize ourselves as governors. You have also mentioned the issue of on-source revenue. I can give an example of my county. We are a rural county, and the, much, the maximum that we can collect in a financial year is maybe 600, 700 million. We are salaries in a month in my county is close to maybe 200, 210 million. So if I was to service salaries using my own source revenue, that will take me three months to service salaries. Of course, without doing any development. So we have been having challenges in terms of, uh, of course, Counties have been having leakages when it comes to on source revenue. Yeah. And also what they are collecting is not enough to service development and also salaries. That is a challenge. Of course, we are being encouraged. And I want to thank all the players who have been supporting the counties and the Senate that has been looking into the welfare of the counties. Mm. So I don't want to say we are collecting very little, but we have to map all the streams that are there so that when we have delays like we have had for the last several months, we can also be cushioned by what we are collecting. And then the other thing that we need to do, we are complaining of resources. Yeah. But I think there is also a lot of duplication on the functions mm. between the national government and the county government. Mm. At the end of the day, we are one government and we are serving one people. So I think we need to find a way. Yeah. We need to sit down and harmonize some of these functions because it is the same, same Wanjiku mm. that is paying salaries for these individual who is employed by the national government yeah. and the one who is employed by the county government. Yet, when you analyze at the end of the day, they are almost doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. There are also institutions that are doing functions within the national government, functions that are meant to be done by the county government. So we end up duplicating resources. Yeah. At the end of the year, at the end of the day, we are complaining of resources. So one, we need to harmonize ourselves okay. as county government and national government okay. so that we avoid this issue of duplication in terms of the resources mm. and the personnel that we are using to deliver those services to one NG. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then the other thing that we need to address, of course, we have been having complaints that, uh, you know, 
the evolution is good. But at the same time, we have to be honest also with ourselves. Mm. There are complaints that when resources were devolved, corruption also was devolved. I think uh, we need to have also that discussion because there are now more mouths yeah. <laughs> looking at the same. I mean, these resources that have come all the way from the national to the counties. Yeah. So I think one area that we need to address, even as we look for more resources, is to seal off yeah. leakages okay. in the counties. All right. And uh, we have to champion that as governors. Okay. The MCAs have to champion that, even as we ensure that people are represented. Yeah. We oversight what we do. We must also ensure that we support each other. Even yeah. media, you have a role to play. Okay. So that we ensure that whatever resources that comes to our hands as governors yeah. is used for the purpose that is intended for. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Senator, one of the biggest issues that is coming out is this issue of revenue allocation. And you as the Senate were supposed to be the safeguards of devolution. But we saw a proposal of 407 billion to be taken to counties. But you are people recommended 385 billion. Haven't you then failed as a Senate? to safeguard the interest of the counties, which is essentially your own. Well, uh, <clears throat> Trevor, you know, Article 96 of the Constitution uh, clearly states that uh, Senate exists to represent counties and protect the interest of counties and their government. That is very clear. And when you talk about uh, representing, a lot of things happen there. We have the issue of oversight, we have the issue of legislation, we have uh, the issue of representation. Um, it was very unfortunate that uh, a section of the senators voted for lower money to their counties uh, because the CRA had recommended 407, uh, but we ended up passing 385. Uh, it was so unfortunate because the Committee of Finance and Budget had uh, recommended 407 billion to be given to the counties. But then when it came on the floor of the House, because of political interest, our colleagues on the Kenya Kwanzaa side decided to go for 385 billion and not 407. So it's unfortunate because um, if you are effectively representing the interest of your county, then you should go for the higher amount. You are given low amount and a higher amount. But is it fair to blame it on the Kenya Kwanza side? We are aware some of you are not even there to vote. No, we, we were there, we voted. Not all the Azimio senators were there. Uh, yeah, maybe Our a few. Were there. Maybe so did a few they were also fail then in their own? Maybe a and few. Then were. collectively, as a Senate, you all failed counties. Yeah, but I, re I want to agree we failed counties because of political interests. Because I think that Senate should do the right thing, regardless of the political uh, affiliation uh, the Senate has support. So that was a failure on our part. And uh, I, I think it is a wrong thing that uh, Senate has a responsibility to allocate more money to their, uh, to, to their respective uh, counties, especially in a scenario where CRA, which is the body yeah. uh, uh, privileged under the law, recommends a high amount. Who are we to go for a low amount? So I think uh, those senators who voted for yeah. low amount are regretting and I, I think next time they will do better than what they did. Okay. Uh, but uh, coming back to the question that you asked, uh, that in amidst all these challenges, how do we get out of it? I think the first thing is to follow the law. Uh, because uh, in my view, there has been a violation of the law. Yeah. First of all, on the issue of disbursement to the counties, mm -hmm. the constitution is very clear that the money should be dispersed to the counties without undue delay. Okay. In the Senate, every time we pass uh, all the laws around uh, funds, we also pass disbursement schedules. 
that indicates how much money will be sent uh, when. Yeah. Uh, and that has to be followed. But in most cases, it's never followed. Uh, we have the national treasury that decides when to send. And, and in fact, that is one aspect that we need to look at it very critically. The role of the national treasury. The national treasury should not even be called the national treasury. It should be independent because it is serving both the county governments and the national government. Yeah. But because it's called the national treasury, it tends to serve, to give priority to the national government and not the county government. Yeah. They collect money. The law, uh, uh, if you read it, if you understand it, says whatever you collect, take 15% to the counties. But that's not what they do. They collect money and they prioritize national government yeah. interest and they leave out counties. So I think we need a conversation uh, on uh, how to structure the treasury so that if the treasury is independent mm -hmm. and it serves uh, effectively the interests of the national government yeah. and the county government. Okay. You look at the payment system, for example, the IFMIS, yeah. it is tilted towards uh, national government. We should have two uh, IFMIS, one for the national government and the other for, okay. for the county government. Yeah. And we should have this IFMIS, which is also linked to the control of budget. Okay. Because one other challenge, uh, uh, His Excellency, the governor here will tell you, is that they make requests, exchequer requests yeah. to the control of budget. It delays because of uh, manual processes. Yeah. It delays, someone has to come and camp in Nairobi to get his uh, exchequer uh, request approved. Yeah. And then after that, he, the governor has to come and camp at the treasury to get the money released. Is that true, Professor? That yeah, in the 21st happened. century, you yeah. still have to come manually yeah. to Nairobi? Yeah. It is true, Trevor, that um, we have been having challenges as uh, governors. Yes, money can be dispersed. Yeah. But to access that money may take you two to three weeks to access the money. And that is why we have been pushing the control of budget, either to automate all the services yeah. or make use of their representatives at the counties because they have, uh, they have their offices in their respective counties. But even if we liaise with all those offices within our, our counties, yeah. still calls for us sending our officers to camp in Nairobi for that process to be complete. So either they automate all these services, yeah or they make use of the officers that have been posted to the counties. Okay. So that is where, I mean, we have a lot of inefficiencies. You All have right. money, yeah, but sometimes but it takes it. you forever to access that Okay. Money. I have to take a quick break here. So I know you, you have not finished your point, and then I'll come with Chege also to give recommendations of where we go from here. And there's a lot of feedback also coming through. Let's take that quick commercial break. Then when we're back, we'll continue this conversation, right? See you shortly.